Hey everybody, it's time for another episode of The Pitch and I am here at Sunset Gower Studios which is right there, just a boring looking building because they won't let you shoot inside Sunset Gower but we're gonna go all the way into UBN where I shoot The Pitch and you're gonna follow me inside for a little behind the scenes and then I'm gonna sit down and start the show so you're gonna see it all the way till I get there. Here we go. UBN is right down this hallway. We're gonna go into the door and I always try to be really nice to everybody when I'm here. So this is inside UBN. That's the green room right there. Hey everybody, you're gonna have a great show today. Tony, Tony is in charge of the station. Hey Tony, how are you? Kirk, my engineer is back there. Kirk, you're looking good. Okay, it's gonna be a great show today and this in here is where the magic happens. Now, it's not a big studio, but it gets the job done and it's my job to make sure everybody is comfortable because when there's cameras, people get a little bit nervous. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, oh, damn it. I left something in my car, just cut, cut. All right, I need you to get nice things said about me. So go around and get interviews. Not like last time, I want it nice. I'm gonna be right back, so hurry up, all right? Hurry up already! I like Tom. He's a great, great guy to work with, yeah. Tom has a healthy sense of self. Let's make it go. I don't know, you don't return my phone calls. Come on, let's go, let's hey, go. Not now, Nancy, it's too hot in here, Tony. You better get the sound right this time. And I don't wanna to see too much headroom, all right? Too much headroom is terrible every time. Let's. Run the UBN intro. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. What do you mean you ran the wrong takes? Are you kidding me? You better be running the show teaser right now. You're not. You are such an idiot. I'm going to kill you. Coming to you from the city of dreams. A TV host of more than 60 infomercials and $1 billion in sales gives inventors, authors, and entrepreneurs the chance to make their dreams come true by finding out, is your product ready to be seen on TV? This is The Pitch with Tom Jordan. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to The Pitch with Tom Jordan. And you can cut the applause because that's more applause than I deserve. This is the show where inventors, authors, and entrepreneurs come on to pitch their products to marketers and investors who are looking for products to put on TV and take to retail. It's great to see everybody. And, you know, I want to let anybody out there know if you're looking for a job, as an engineer on a show like this, a video podcast show, I am looking for a new engineer because of what happened earlier in the Raise the sound. Okay, that was a good one. He got me. He cut the sound. I learned that the engineer has all the power because he cut the sound on me, but that was a lot of fun. We had a good time doing that, and I guess you'll never know if that's how I really am at the beginning of a show. I'm never going to tell, and the only way you're going to find out is to be a guest on the show. So I'm not going to replace you, Kurt. Don't worry. It's all good. <laughs> okay, we have a great show today. We have a lot of different types of products, a real variety today. I have a kid's product that will make every kid a potential future NBA star, a kitchen product that will save money and keep you healthy, and a product with hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales that will probably be the most interesting and maybe embarrassing interview I ever do in my career. You do not want to miss that one. And at the end of the show, if you're a parent, your kid is probably a huge fan of my very special guest because I have later on the mom from the hit Nickelodeon show Drake and Josh. The very funny, very talented Nancy Sullivan is here today. Okay, it's time for our very first pitch. Chad Briscoe is a former college All-American, European professional basketball player, college and high school coach, and currently a youth basketball development trainer. His goal is to give every player an opportunity to develop their basketball skills with his practical invention, the offhand coach. Hey, Chad, how are you? Good to see you. I'm doing great, Tom. How are you doing this evening? Oh, I'm doing really well. Now, you're coming to us from the Bay Area up in Northern California. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly, up here in Northern California with the Golden State Warriors. Oh, you got a good team this year. You're doing better than we are down here with the Lakers. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> good, well, good for you. We'll talk another year. So listen, <laughs> you have had so much experience both playing and coaching and training. What problem did you recognize out there that you wanted to solve? Well, over the years of being a trainer and a, and a coach, I noticed that a lot of kids, there was a high percentage of kids who just lacked the basic fundamentals of basketball which are dribbling, passing, and shooting. So what I wanted to do was come up with a product 
that would actually allow these kids to become better basketball players, no matter what their situation or circumstances were. So tell me about your product and how it solves the problem. My product is the offhand coach, and it's a one of a kind basketball training tool that allow players to train 100% of the training time without any downtime, focusing on dribbling, passing, and shooting. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna strengthen their weak or offhand, it's gonna help create the best training form for passing, and also the shooting form is gonna help with repetition. Chad, explain to us how the product works. Well, first the player is going to wrap the belt around their waist and they're gonna use the snap fastener to snap it into place. It's gonna be easy enough for kids to snap it in and out by themselves. Then they're gonna use their dominant hand and they're gonna place it into the arm loop, which is going to make sure that your arm stays comfortable while you're working on your form. So it doesn't matter how big the kid is. I mean, they, it's adjustable, the waistband, and they put it around their waist. They put their dominant hand uh, through the little loop so they restrict it, and then they have to dribble with their weak hand. Is that right? Exactly. So what it's going to do is going to strengthen your, your, your non-dominant hand. Okay. And it's going to actually help create a better form when you're passing because you're going to create the proper hand positioning. And with the shooting, it's just repetition. You know, everyone wants to be able to shoot, so you have to be able to do it over and over and over again. Now, I, I see a string there, so explain to me how the string works. What does that do? Definitely. The string is here, and this is really one of the unique things on the, on the, the product. So what you want to do is you want to draw the string close to you to make sure that the ball is close to you. This is going to create better dribbling form. Now you're going to let the string out a little bit more, and then you're going to work on your passing. So now you're going to be able to keep your fingers in the proper position for proper passing, make the pass, the ball is going to come back to you. And lastly, the shooting form. So now you're going to adjust the string all the way to the end, and this is going to give you maximum height on your shot. So now you're going to be shooting repetition, you're going to be making the, the, the proper pass, and you're actually going to be dribbling better because you're keeping your hand on top of the basketball. Okay, now, beside the skill building that you talked about with the passing, dribbling, and shooting, are there other benefits to your product and the way it was designed? Uh, definitely. When you talk about safety, as a parent, you want your child to be safe. So now there's no more chasing loose balls. Mm -hmm. Also, parents don't have to worry about shoveling thousands of dollars out for personal training fees. Kids can do it indoors, outdoors, in the rain, in the sun. It doesn't matter. They can utilize this tool anytime. I mean, it seems to me that you really don't even need to have a basketball court, right? I mean, you can do that anywhere. Exactly. And that's another great feature. You don't even have to have a basketball court because you're actually simulating dribbling, passing, and shooting skills. You're not actually using the ball to shoot into the hoop. So this is going to be perfect for any place, any time, and for any kid. Now, is there a certain age or skill level you need to be to really get the, the real benefits out of the product? Well, actually, you don't. But that's another great part because there's a lot of kids who's never played basketball before. So this is going to be a great introduction to the game of basketball. And then you talk about those who have been playing for a long time. This is going to keep them sharp during their off season, So they can use this and keep their dribbles and their shooting form intact. So it benefits everybody. So all skill levels, all ages. I got to tell you, I I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. So I am from the hotbed of <laughs> basketball. And I've been a big fan my whole life. And, and I, uh -huh. I did enjoy playing basketball. But my problem was I was not a great dribbler. And I didn't ever learn to properly keep my head up. I was always losing the ball. So where were you, you know, 20, 30 or whatever years ago when I needed it? Because that would have given me a lot of confidence to have that dribbling. It always bugged me. And I've heard it from a lot of different players as well. A lot of parents that's come up and, you know, the kids I've trained, everyone said the same exact thing. So that's how I know this is going to be a great hit. Now, do you have a patent on it? Um, actually, I have a provisional patent, and I just filed for my utility patent, so I'm excited about that time. Okay, and, and what about the cost to actually make it? Do you know what that is at this point? That's where I'm going to need some help, because I was given a, a price of around $6, but I know with volume, I can get it much lower. Now, Chad, what position did you play when you were playing basketball? I played the point guard position and the, the shooting position, the, the two guards, so I have a lot of experience dribbling, passing, and shooting. And that's why this is so special to me, because I know it's going to benefit kids. Well, we all want to make money, of course, on our products. But in addition to having a successful product out there, is there anything you're trying to accomplish with the offhand coach? You know, being a single father of two girls, you know, my daughter, she's 16 now, but she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of four. And me being a basketball player, she's always been around, around me, watching me play. So I wanted to make sure that I'd, I'd done something that was going to allow her and uh, millions of other kids just some physical activity. Well, that's a real inspiration, and we appreciate all the work you've been doing with the youth, and 
I can tell you're a great dad. And just the fact that you yeah. have something where I'm not going to be chasing loose balls anymore yeah. <laughs> with that string, I'm yeah. thrilled. So thank you so much for being on the show today, Chad. Well, I appreciate the time, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, if anybody out there wants to get in touch with Chad about the offhand coach, you can email me at tom at thepitchwithtom.com, and I will get you connected with him. I love the product because I needed it when I was younger. <laughs> and we'll be right back with our next pitch right after this. Watch the pitch at ubnradio.com, Channel 2, every first and third Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. You can also watch full episodes or individual segments from the pitch on demand starting the day after the initial airing by going to thepitchwithtom.com or my YouTube channel, the Pitch with Tom Jordan. Go to either place to see any episodes that you have missed. If you're an inventor and want to find out about appearing on The Pitch, go to thepitchwithtom.com and click on the red inventor button. Marketers looking for more information should click on the blue marketer button. And you can also learn more about me and my work as a host and producer at the same website or by visiting tomjordan.com. If you're a marketer or investor and you see a product you're interested in on today's show and you want to talk to the inventor or if you want to contact me for any reason. You can email me at tom at thepitchwithtom.com. This is The Pitch with Tom Jordan. Welcome back to The Pitch. Okay, let's meet our next guest. Bill Tuttle has been inventing products for over 40 years, including 30 patents and number one Invention of the Year awards from Sylvania Lighting. And he's in their Hall of Fame. Bill is coming to us from Burlington, Kentucky to present his clean towel holder. Hey, Bill, how you doing there in Burlington? Um, it is cold. <laughs> it's cold. Well, we're neighbors. How far is Burlington from Louisville, where I'm originally from? About 80 miles. Bill, tell us the story of how you came up with the idea for your product and what the problem was that you're solving. Tom, I had a friend of mine. He came by and he washed his hand in my outdoor sink. And when he did, he started looking for a clean towel. He didn't want to use the one I have because he didn't know somebody else had used it. And he also didn't want to leave his prints on the, the towel. So. I decided, well, I'll bring out a roll of paper towels on a conventional roll, and uh, that would solve the problem. But it didn't solve the problem. But I noticed that people started using one hand to hold the roll and the other hand to take the sheet off. They started contaminating the roll, and then they started using more than they needed because they would see the prints and they'd take off uh, extra, sh extra sheets, and they started unraveling. So I wanted to solve that problem. And to do that, came up with a with one that has a clamp on it. I wanted it to be one hand operation from start to finish. And I'll demonstrate how that works. As you can see. That was one hand. Put the sheet out and take the sheet off. Very nice, very nice. So you've got some sort of clamping mechanism there that allows you to pull one sheet off with one hand. It, makes full contact with the center post and then by opening it it allows enough room to place the a full roll on it will go from start to finish it increases in force as the roll gets smaller and that's what you need because a big roll it's not hard to take one off but the smaller roll it becomes more difficult when i come home from walking my dog toby he's a he's a 10 pound yorkie and i want to clean his paws and i pick him up with one hand and with the other hand, I reach over to pull off some paper towels, and I typically pull off too much because I do that. I'm wasteful, but I'm trying to wet a paper towel to clean his paws, and, and maybe I clean his tush now and then. You know, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. But to have a way to use one hand and get just one sheet, I assume there's a lot of cases where people are only have one hand. I observed this during, my, uh, during our cookout. Uh, people will come along, and they'll have a plate uh, full of food, or in some cases, they all have a, maybe a baby. And of course, they're trying to get her sheet off, and it's very, very difficult with the conventional holder. But you're also saying that even if you had two hands available, that that's not great either because you end up contaminating the roll, right? Only 5% of people clean their hands properly when they wash them. So that means 95% are leaving their germs on the road. Now, when I'm looking there at, at what you have with the clean towel holder, that's a vertical style, but some people have a horizontal style, like under their shelving, so will that work for that too? It, very, it, it will, Tom. I'm going to show you. Okay, great. Same design, work the same way, take a sheet off. I have one here just in the back of me. 
it'll stay up. And then when you're ready to take the sheet off, you pull it out to the, to the uh, seam and rip it right off. Are there competitive products out there? I've seen things that seem somewhat similar, but explain to me what is different about yours. There's a couple problems I find with their, their product. It has tremendous pressure in the beginning and not enough pressure at the end. Yep. The reason why, they use a spring. And we know when a spring is fully compressed or extended, it's got tremendous uh, pressure. And a big row, uh, that becomes a problem because you've got too much pressure and you can pull it over. Well, they take care of that problem by putting a huge weight in the, in the base. And then at the end of the row, there's not enough pressure. And now you've got to use two hands or it'll just spin out. Pull out the one that you had there before. Is it a cherry wood? Yeah, that's it. And i got to tell you, my wife and I love the look of that. Uh, is there other colors or, or designs available? Yes, there is, Tom. I'm going to show you. I have a white one and I have one in black. Do you currently have a patent on the item? Yes, I do, Tom. There's uh, two patents. There's a uh, utility patent, which is the function how this operates. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, uh, a design patent. It's the, the style or what have you. So okay, and, and do you have inventory right now, Bill? Right now, I have approximately 150 between the, the three combinations. And that's the perfect number for a test, so that, that's good to know. And, and what about the cost to actually make this and the price that it's being sold at? We're selling it at uh, $30. That, that would be retail. Right now, I'm uh, looking at about, about $12 uh, at the, the method we're using to, to manufacture this. And that's what people watching can help you with, is getting that price down, because you would want to do that. Because right now, if I understand correctly, you're basically making them yourself. So talk to us about where you're making those. After I retired, um, I uh, started volunteering, helping, uh, mentoring uh, young people. And I was asked to come to a, a sheltered workshop group called Baywack. When I got there, they wanted to know, well, what, what could I do? What can I, how can I help these individuals? And sure enough, the quality of, they, uh, of their work, uh, it, it surprised me. So I'm very proud of that group. Well, you're a good man putting those people to work, and I know people from Kentucky have great hearts <laughs> because we're both from Kentucky, right, Bill? I would like to volunteer, you know. That's yeah. a, that Absolutely. If anybody out there wants to talk to Bill about his clean towel holder, you can email me at tom at thepitchwithtom.com. And we're going to be right back with my next pitch, and believe me, this is one you do not want to miss. Stay right with us. To learn how to appear on The Pitch, log on to thepitchwithtom.com. This is The Pitch with Tom Jordan. Welcome back to The Pitch. All right, this next pitch is for a product that solves a very serious problem, but I got to tell you, you're going to think I'm joking and that I'm pulling your leg and that this isn't real, but I'm telling you it is. Roderick Calhoun is a retired federal officer with 28 years of service who, while transporting prisoners, realized a need that he and millions of others share, and he invented an award-winning product that has everyone talking. Well, I am so excited about this interview because I have no idea what's going to happen because <laughs> this is a great product you have. So let's get right into it. Okay. Tell me how you came up with this idea. What was the problem that you were dealing with? Okay, I'm a federal officer, and one of my duties is I transport inmates. Mm -hmm. And when I'm transporting inmates, inmates have belly chains on, leg irons, in handcuffs, so I couldn't just pull over and go to the restroom. Yeah, you, when you're transporting them, you can't say, time to go to the bathroom. That's right. So what do you do? You just hold it? I had to hold it. So you just hold it until a uh, bathroom come available. And, of course, it's not healthy. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, Are you a coffee drinker? Yes. <laughs> so you're drinking coffee all day. You're holding it. you got a prisoner, which I'm sure they're not always the nicest guys, and you can't go to the restroom. That's pretty miserable. That's right. So you just hold it. Okay, so, so you had this thought, I've got to, what, create something to, to take care of this problem? I thought of this idea. I was like, you know, it's got to be something I can wear. Mm -hmm. And I checked. It wasn't nothing I can wear. So I ended up designing this product here, which is called the Gotta Go. Okay, it's made of uh, soft rubber. Mm -hmm. It's aptitude, as you see, and attached to your ankle or calf. It's stretchable, stretched about a 54-inch waist. Um, it doesn't leak. I, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's important. So, uh, it's, it's very uh, comfortable and and soft. 
Okay, let's. Uh, I want to come back to the design of it, but let's okay. talk a little bit about your target market. I mean, because obviously with you, it's very clear, uh, an officer with prisoners. Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming there's a lot of professions out there that have a similar problem where they can't get to the bathroom. I know I think of uh, truck drivers, you know, limo drivers, taxi drivers, when they can't just stop and, and go somewhere. They may not be available. What other professions are, are, are similar to that? Well, you got, you got doctors in surgery that do eight-hour right. surgeries. They can't leave the surgery, okay. Hunters, you know, because the scent, you know. Ah, uh, okay. And then you have minors that go, you know, they don't like to use the restroom down. <laughs> I would think up. not. So, And you have personal use, wearing two football games, basketball Fo games. You mean because they don't want to go to the long line? Exactly. Okay, so, yes. it's, <laughs> so it's a long line. I don't want to go to the bathroom waiting line. And so if they have the got to go, they don't have to do that. Exactly. Okay. Or, you know, you wear what about the golf course? Golf course? Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't be good to be going yeah. on the golf course. Now, a movie. You know, you go to a movie theater. <laughs> you don't, I mean, how many times you've been to the movies and eating popcorn, drinking? There are big drinks sit, in the movies. And you don't want to leave. So, Would you do that with a date beside you? Yes, if you have, uh, yes, I would. You would, would you, I, you invented it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I can understand some of those. Yeah. Uh, what about the Secret Service with the president? They can't just leave the president and say, I have to go to the bathroom. That's right. Secret Service, okay. uh, security, security officers. Very security. Uh, right. uh, camera operators. Hey, yeah, these guys, they, yeah. I'm not going to let them go to the restroom when we're shooting. That's of course, right. there's no guys there, but <laughs> Kurt, you can't go to the restroom. That's right. Okay, that makes sense. A camera crew until the director says cut. That's right. Uh, concerts. Anywhere that has long lines. Right. Uh, it, this is perfect for the got to go. Okay, so professions and long lines where you don't want to wait in the line. Anything else that is a good target market for the got to go? The uh, men that have incontinence, prostate issues. Oh, of course. Now, it's perfect for them because it, it's instead of wearing adult diapers, this is something they can wear. Because they always got to go. They always got to go. And, and, and they either are miserable trying to get to a bathroom or they're constantly going to the bathroom. So you're saying if they are wearing something like the got to go, they can not be miserable. Yes. So you recognized a need and you wanted to solve it. So what did you do? Did you create a, a, a prototype for yourself and try it out? Now, the first one I made, I made a prototype I, and I tried it out myself. Mm -hmm. And actually, I start wearing it and it was comfortable. And I was like, okay, now I, I can... I can yeah, I can use this. Okay, wait, 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 wait. First one you made, your own prototype. You you made it yourself. I made it myself. Yeah, you are you telling me it worked and there was no like you know problems, no leaking, anything like that? No, I had a couple of mishaps. <laughs> Define mishaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wearing it all day in the garage working. Uh, I go back in, I take it off, and I go back into the garage later, and I was like, I just start peeing. It was like. <laughs> All of a sudden, my pants was all wet, and I was like, "You forgot, oh, forgot that you took it off because it's, it's very comfortable." Well, you know what? That <laughs> says it is very comfortable because you didn't even know you took it off. Exactly. And you obviously that wasn't a great situation. No, it wasn't. But you were by yourself. I was by myself. <laughs> okay, you, you've designed it for yourself. It's working. And then what? Your your fellow officers? Did they know about it? Were they interested in it? How did, what happened next? Well, at first, a, a lot of them thought I was crazy. <laughs> And yeah. then I start wearing it, and then it was like, uh, you know what? I need one of them got to go. Mm -hmm. You know, they start saying, just like I, I used to say, man, I got to go. Right. But then I was like, when we transport, I was like, see, I'm good. Right? And so now. You were fine. They were miserable. They were miserable. Okay. So then it was like, well, you know what? I, I, I want one of them got to go. And so that's how I started. So I, I ended up giving one to them. A lot of them didn't admit that they was wearing one. Sure. You know, someone was too embarrassed to say, but, yeah. you know. I, Why would you share that with people? Yeah. Well, I did all the time. It well, it was me. your invention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what did they think? What, no, they loved it. Now, a lot of them loved it. Uh, some of them really started liking because, see, it started to be uh, a security issue. Oh, okay. So for them, that's what, you know, that really started them to, it's like, hey, I, this is perfect for me. Okay, so walk me through exactly how it works, how you use it. You 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 put you put it on like a jock strap, and your penis goes into this area here. You see, is a wide opening there, and it has grooves inside, so you don't stay wet. So you're always raised up, and it, it's pretty open that area here, and it just drains into the holes into the into the back, which is velcroed to your ankle or your or your calf. 
Okay, so so it, you wear the jock strap, and now regards to the jock strap, is that a one size fits all? I mean, some guys are skinny, some guys are heavy. Well, this is about a twenty eight here. It stretches to about a fifty four. Oh, okay. So it covers it's, a lot of guys. It covers a lot. Okay. And we also it has, uh, we have a, a velcro which is can stretch even to about like a fifty nine. Oh, so it can even yes. go further. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So the guys wearing it, mm -hmm. and they're um, uh, do I get medical with this uh, question? Uh, yeah. Their, their apparatus goes inside. What do you call this? I, I'm afraid to touch it. I mean, I, don't know. <laughs> I call the strangest this, thing I've ever. I call about. this part the, it's the cup. What you go in here? The, the penis, cup. The penis goes in here. Okay. Now you ask if uh, one size fit all. You know, like <laughs> that's uh, another size we got to deal with there, right? Yeah. Well, unless you hung like a horse. <laughs> Uh, you should be able to fit in here. If you're any bigger than that, it's, it's okay. not going to work for you. So it works for the majority of men. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it's going to fit me. I, <laughs> I couldn't help that. I, I couldn't, you know, I had to go there. <laughs> but, and it's because I'm assuming if you're too big, you're going to be down to that bottom area. Yeah, so if you're too big, you're going to be uh, hitting the bottom here. And that's not good. No, that's not good. Cause then, are you feeling the wet if you've gone? Well, yeah, it, 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 if you're blasting. Yeah. You might feel the wet. But otherwise, you're saying all men can wear it. Yes. They're not going to feel wet. They're going to go, and it's going to go down this tube. tube. Into this bag. Into a bag. So it's kind of like the catheter from that standpoint. Exactly. To where it's going to go down, and, and you have that around your ankle. Your ankle or your calf area. Or your calf area. Yeah. And, and how much does that hold? I mean, how many times can you go? I can go about four or five times, but it holds about nine ounces. Okay. And then when you, when you get full, you just drain it. Turn the blue knob here and... And drain it. You just not anywhere. I mean, what do you go to the? I no, you, you go, go to the bathroom. <laughs> and and you just kind of take it off your your your. Yeah, calf. take the velcro off. And okay. You just um, drain it into the toilet and seal it back and strap it back on. Okay, so so you don't so you can clean it. I'm assuming it, that's what you do. You clean it when you're done. You don't throw it away. Yes. No. Yeah. This one here is reusable. Now I do have a disposable. Okay, so it now, works similarly, but it's disposable. Dis disposables. It works the same way. Only difference is you just completely throw this away you just throw it away when you're done when you're done okay so that's the disposable so you have one that you can either clean or dispose of exactly. and now when you're wearing it do people know i know you talked about your your officer friends mm -hmm. they some wanted some you know wanted to hide it it seems like you could see that through your pants no no well this version here if you want to be discreet mm -hmm. you can't see it through the pants because it has this cover there exactly okay now the other version it's like this one here. Okay. Is that it shows to the pants. If you want to wear it to a bar, <laughs> you can wear you can wear it to the bar and uh, and uh, this one is visible to your pants. Okay. So, so the bar version is the version that is not discreet. Exactly. And and are you are you doing that at the bar because you want people to see that you are a healthy guy? Or are you doing it because you don't want to go to the bathroom at the bar? Well, the guys that buy from that I sold to, they wear just because of bar because they said enhancement in their pants. <laughs> that's so that's that's what uh, I didn't think nothing about it, but that's what that's why that's when it's the most popular version. Oh, it is the most popular. Yes, because guys like to uh, get enhanced. some other advantages from the gotta go exactly. besides just. <laughs> okay, uh, I gotta ask you this: Are you wearing one right now? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> 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 and, 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 you know, we've only been talking for about five or ten minutes. Has nature called during this conversation? No, I went before. You did? Yeah. But not, I didn't see you go to the restroom here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, and there's nothing, there's no problems going on. There's no, no leaks. Leak, no, see, leaks no, leak, no leaks at all. I got to tell you, I, I actually would never know that you have it on. I mean, it's, it's. <laughs> This is the strangest <laughs> interview. Okay, now, are there competitive products like this on the market? There's nothing like Magata Go. Everything out there is like uh, latex. Um, you have a lot and of- And yours isn't latex? Mine's non-latex. What's, the, what's no. the advantage there? Like a, allergic to a latex kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, a lot of men are, are allergic to latex, mm -hmm. and the latex is slippery. It's messy. So can it actually slip off? It is that slips, what you're saying? Yes, oh. it can it slip off. So it's this messy. Is, That's not good. Yes. So this is uh, nothing like yours, though. Nothing like the gotta go. Okay. Well, what's what stage is your product in now? Are, these aren't prototypes anymore. You're actually selling them, and people are using them, obviously. Yes. Tell, tell me about that. Uh, oh, now we have three different versions um, that's on the market now. We have a what you call the uh, cover version, and we have the, of course, the uh, disposable version. Okay. 
and we have the contour version, which is the most popular one. So the contour is the one, I'm assuming because of the name contour, the contour is the one that people can see. Yeah, this is the one that's most popular. That's the most popular And this one. is the contour version. Okay. And I notice, hold up the other ones uh, with okay. the contour, that, that you've got either white or black colors. Well, this I'm not even sure what the question is here. <laughs> <laughs> Are they, but they're the same sizes, right? They're the same sizes, but this is disposable. This one... Completely. So the white one you throw away, the black one's the one you wear proudly. Yes. <laughs> okay. And if you want to be discreet, you wear this one. Okay, and that's the discreet one. Yes. Yeah, that's the one that I think I would probably wear. <laughs> and do you have a patent on the product? Yes, I, we have a patent on the contour version. Mm -hmm. We have three patents pinned on the other versions. Okay, and what about sales? Total sales to this point, we sold about 7,000. 7,000? Yes. Yeah, so What's we, that in revenue? Uh, How much did that generate? That's about 400,000 revenue. Okay, and you generated that much in sales. And are you hearing from some of the customers? Or Obviously, people want it, and do they like it? What are they saying? People love it because, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a need. You know, uh, one of the, the best compliments I got is from a guy. I'm he, afraid to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he called me up, and he said, hey, you know that? Your, your got to go gave me my dignity back. Oh. And I thought that was, you know, perfect. Yeah, you know, because does sum it up. You know, because that way, you know, like I said, it, it, to them, to him, he doesn't have to wear a diaper anymore, or adult diaper. Well, maybe that's so a slogan there about getting your dignity back, because that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that's a great statement. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about cost on it. How, how much does it cost to make, and what are you selling these for? Okay, right now the cost to make is like five bucks. Uh, I it can be around three bucks because of the the volume. volume. So as low as three dollars. As low as three dollars. That's inexpensive. Okay, yes. and what are you selling it for? The the uh, this version here is the cover version. Mm -hmm. I sell for thirty nine ninety five. Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, the contour version, the most popular one, mm -hmm. is fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, of course it is. Might as well charge and more the, for that uh, one. And the the, the disposable mm -hmm. is twenty nine ninety nine. You have great margins. You really could sell this for nineteen ninety five and still have a great margin on it. So that yes. that is very impressive. Yes. Are there other products that could go along with this that you have? Yes, uh, extra bags. You can buy. Of course, <laughs> you need you the can, bags if you don't. You can have it buy uh, uh, if you go on long trips or long hauls. You can buy the twenty ounce bag. And, so, and how much does that cost? And what are you selling that for? The, the twenty ounce bags run about a uh, dollar twenty five, and I sell them for ten dollars. Great margin on that, too. Yes. Okay, so there's a continuity program as part of this, actually. Yes. So you've got really, what I'm hearing, three different markets. You've got the incontinence mm -hmm. uh, market with the adult diapers and all. You've got men that have professions that they can't get to the restroom, don't have access to it. And there's a lot of those when you start thinking about it, yeah. right? And then you've got all the lazy guys <laughs> who are at the ball games, are in the bars, and they just want to sit there. Maybe they're on interviews. and. <laughs> Right, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and they don't want to go stand in the line, or the line's too long, and so they just want to sit there and enjoy the game. And when they gotta go, they they go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming in because this is. Am I red at all? I, I feel like I'm <laughs> blushing a little bit. <laughs> but it was it was a lot of fun hearing about the product. And, right. and here's the thing. Uh, th thanks for coming in, Roderick. Right, thank I, you. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it. And the truth is, I, I laughed a lot, and there's a lot of jokes you can make. And um, it is one of those things that's funny. When I first saw it, when uh, Roderick you know, submitted his idea to the show, I thought it was a joke or uh, maybe a sex toy. I didn't know what it was. But as soon as I understood a little bit more, this is a real huge market. And the, and the question is, are you the type of marketer out there that wants a new niche to make sales in? Because obviously, Roderick's already selling it in the way he's doing it. So there is all kind of potential out there. And if you want to talk to Roderick about the Gotta Go personal care device, you can email me at tom at thepitchwithtom.com, and I will get you in touch with him. I'm sure he can send you a sample. You can experiment with it. Are you going to leave one with me today? Oh, yes. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm going to be wearing my gotta go in the next interview, which it, it, the guest is perfect for this topic. And I will bring it up to her because Nancy Sullivan is here when we come back. You don't want to miss that one either. It's, she's a perfect guest for after this, <laughs> this product. And she'll love that I said that. We'll be right back. To learn more about The Pitch, log on to thepitchwithtom.com. This is The Pitch with Tom Jordan.
Welcome back to The Pitch. Now, as you've seen, there's lots of ways to bring a product onto The Pitch. You can either come into the studio if you live in the Los Angeles area, or like today, there can be Skype pitches where I can do it remotely, no matter where you are, anywhere in the country. And then sometimes I will pitch the product for you, and other times you will go to my pitch roster of professional hosts. And these are hosts that will either pitch or co-pitch your product for you. And I have a very talented guest here today that is on that pitch roster. Nancy Sullivan is a professional actress, talk show host, commercial and cartoon voice actress, sketch comedian, direct response host, and has been called America's favorite mom for her well-loved role on Nickelodeon smash hitcom Drake and Josh. Nancy Sullivan is here. You must be exhausted after that <laughs> intro. How do you have time to do anything else? Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Now, who I'm called good. you America's favorite mom? It was me, right? I started that phrase? Well, yes, it was <laughs> you. I wanted you as a mom? Is that uh, what it was? Yes. <laughs> no, my mom, I love her too much. Really? Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to be your mom, Tom. <laughs> well, you have done a lot. Huh? Thank yes, you. you have. But, am... but we're going to get to all that. Okay. Okay, first we're going to start back to how we came to know each other. Do you remember? Well, yes, I do, but I want to go before that even. Okay. Because you knew my wife long I did, before yeah. you knew me, right? Mm -hmm. Was that in New York? I knew Claudia in New York. We did a, a, a very um, a short film project together. We played sisters. Ah. I was the bad sister, and she was the good sister. You were the bad sister. Uh -huh. She was the good. So it was typecasting. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's before you got your mitts on her, though, and changed her <laughs> And bad. I ruined her? Yes, totally. So you knew her. You all were friends. And I remember hearing about you. Really? And then we met... Do you want to share? I met you at an audition. Oh, well, I You don't, probably don't remember I don't that. remember that. It was in that. some yard on the west side. But then we did uh, the, the, the strangest job. The strangest job <laughs> I have ever had in my life, right? That was really weird. And, and in a nutshell, it was spying on a rival cruise ship. We were hired by Princess, Princess. Cruise Lines yes. to go on the Royal, Royal Caribbean. Caribbean ship. Mm-hmm. And to videotape things to show how that ship wasn't <laughs> great, right? Yeah, and it yeah. was a brand new ship. It was huge. First voyage. Yeah. And so they were assuming it was going to be terrible because it would be crowded exactly. and all that. And then we were supposed to, after that, go on the Princess Cruise Line. On the good ship. The good ship. Mm -hmm. And then they were going to do a comparison. So that's the setup, right? Absolutely. Okay, so tell everybody what happened. Well, I remember we were... Uh, We'd be in our um, rooms and they'd call us. They'd be like, get down, get down. It's really crowded at the pool. Because this no is seats. undercover. Yeah, it was total spying. It was like the producer, director, us two, and maybe the, one of the, the, the client. client. We were acting like we were old buddies from college. <laughs> and there was one a, person that couldn't come. Yeah, we had a really bad story that we were making a film for someone who we used to share an apartment That was our cover. With. Yeah, but we didn't really have it very well. And so the people that we <laughs> ate dinner with every night were confused. These poor people. And they would ask different things and we'd give them different answers every night. Like the writer Jeff said that we lived in a very small Moorish complex, and I didn't know that. And I said, "Oh, it's this huge thing called the Oakwood." And the woman goes, "Well, that's not what Jeff said." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, Jeff, right. I can't listen to Jeff." Right. So, but we, it was a ball. Wasn't it was it? a lot of fun. It was like the the, the most fun, easiest job because we'd work like five minutes a day. I know, but what happened on the second cruise though? The, the second cruise never happened. Never happened because because a good glowing review <laughs> came out for the first ship, and they were just going to have egg on their face. Well, they looked at the footage. And there, it wasn't too crowded. No. It would look like the best thing ever. Yeah. And they're like, what are we going to compare against? So we we got screwed out of the second cruise. We got paid, though. Did we? Yeah. Oh, well, then I'll I did. Time. Oh, okay. Maybe my I agent? <laughs> is my agent around somewhere? <laughs> Your agent's my agent. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it was like, we'll never have anything like that again. No, it's very no. weird. But we did work again together, right? Was it? We worked other? together like four times. Oh my gosh! Now I'm we embarrassed. We did that. I know. I have a wicked memory. Okay, you, so you tell be me. Careful. Tell me. Then we did. Um, we did an industrial at a car dealership for like Infinity or Lexus or something. Me? You don't remember? No, you and I? Nothing. Oh, thanks. Nothing's gone. <laughs> well, I'm getting old. Uh, yes, I remember true. Nancy. You were wonderful. In that I project. was. I was. We were. I remember we were standing at a podium in a car dealership. So, hmm. anyway, and then we've done a couple direct response shows. Yes, we have. I know. I remember one. What? Uh, you only remember one. I, well, I, maybe I remember both, but I definitely remember uh, home, home Medics. The yeah. breathe. It was like good scent in the air. Yeah, and I did the all that the heavy Cesare lifting. And you, you just stood there and looked cute and went, "Tell me more." <laughs> That's because you're more talented. Drive than I am. that. I had the polo shirt on. Yeah, sort of. You got more money, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, look at him. What was the other job we did? You tell me. Oh, gosh. Now we're going to be here with blank, <laughs> blank space forever. I'm acting like your wife, honey. Yeah. It was called the Obus 
ultra form yeah. and it was oh, the back thing it was a back of course. rest what do you mean of course well i don't remember <laughs> because it didn't like have any big and it was a con air yeah thing. it should have worked yeah yeah well yeah it was great i still have it in my car actually you know oh is that what that's what i'm using y oh i love that Seriously? product that's the i forgot the name of it i swear to you it's on my it's in my chair at my desk i'd love it and you didn't remember i don't remember yeah, the they name gave of us, it I, I, they gave me yeah, two yeah yeah Oh, mm -hmm. well, and every time now, I take my car and I get work done, the guy's like, hey, this is really nice. I know with the improv, the sketch stuff is yeah. something that you've done a I've lot of. I've done sketch of. comedy. T talk about that a little bit. Well, I always wanted to be on Saturday Night Live, and that, that's, You'd have been great. The, that's the holy yeah, grail, course, right? But I did get my versions in a way. Yes. Because I got to do a show called The News, which was a syndicated sketch show, and we actually did I almost 100 show. episodes. Do you remember The of News? Of course I remember it. Are you serious? It's before I knew you. Yeah. But I remember watching, and that's when Claudia said, that's Nancy Sullivan. Oh. I'm like, oh, my gosh, It was a great. funny show, wasn't it? it was very, yeah. Do you remember any characters you did on that show? I do a Sharon Osbourne, oh. though. It sounds a little bit like it, Tom, my sweetheart, my darling. Wow. And uh, I don't know if I did that on that show, but I've been doing that. I just got uh, cast in an animated movie you do with that voice, yeah. Really? Yeah, I do a lot of animation. I did yeah. a cartoon called Squirrel Boy for Cartoon Network a couple of years ago. My daughter and worked on it too, so I know the show. I think Lexi I got her the job. You, I suggested I her did. to the casting director, Donna Grillo. Yes, and we send you 10% every time there's an episode, don't we? Oh, I wish. That's right, Lexi worked on <laughs> yes, that. Yes, she did. On Squirrel Boy, I played the mother and I talked sort of like this. Oh, Andy. I wasn't talking to you, Rodney. I was talking to Andy. Today's a very important day for him. And then, of course, there's always this lady that sort of smokes too much. Yeah. You know, Tom will be that in a few years. Ooh, that's creepy. Even though I don't smoke. <laughs> that's scary, though. I know. I look so innocent and wholesome, don't I? A lot of people know you best for, especially the younger generation. I mentioned it before, the mom on Drake and Josh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> My daughter couldn't believe I knew her. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, t tell us about that show. Well, you know what's crazy about that? Drake and Josh. Um, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Yep. Big sitcom. We won Kids' Choice Award for favorite show two, two three course. times. It was an ensemble of five. Before that, I had done the Amanda show, uh, Amanda Bynes sketch show, and the two boys they were so great together that they gave them a, a show, oh, and I went along as the mom, which is fantastic. Nickelodeon just hired me. So we were a family, and, and it, it was just wonderful because it was kind of like the Cheers or the Seinfeld of kids' TV. I mean, oh, it was yeah. that big. Yeah. And the thing that's funny is they still replay it. Nickelodeon runs these reruns forever. So I have fans today who are five years old, and I have fans that were 30. Let's get to the infomercials because I don't want to run out of time. I know. And not address direct response I with know. you, right? Exactly. Okay, so what do you love most? about the direct response infomercial world. Absolutely the most fun is dealing with the inventors. When I do a product hey, and that's I what get this show is. But absolutely I, I yeah. was talking to to the guy in the, Roderick. In the um yeah. Roderick. I was talking to him for a while while mm -hmm. you were busy with the other inventor and when you get someone who has a product that they I mean people who see the end result they don't realize how hard these people have worked. Oh yeah. And they have put their there are blood, sweat, and tears into it, and I love it because it comes out of a need, usually a need for themselves or a family member. Sometimes it's very emotional, isn't it? Yeah. And to be able to be part of the ensemble, part of the team that makes their dream come true and hopefully you know, profitable and they get rich off it and it, it fulfills a need for the consumer, I love that. Yeah. I love that collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I want to capture the enthusiasm when I work of that person and make them feel you know, that, yeah. that, that I'm invested in their product too. It's, it's really great. So when, you, when you're hosting a show, yeah. what is Nancy Sullivan bringing to it? What are your strengths? Come on, talk about yourself. Uh, and then I'll tell, that's them. Not and then I'll tell the truth. Well, I'm quick on my feet. <laughs> like if they want to change and they want something, they want some improvisation, here you go. Yeah. I'm also, I know that I bring a warmth and an authenticity. Thus and the, mom, like that. the mom thing. The mom thing, thing. Yeah. exactly. I know there's a believability, a credibility. I, I'm just going off of what people tell me. Does that come from you having so many kids? Where does that come from? I don't have any kids that I know of, Wait a minute. Tom. You played a mom yeah. on a big sitcom, and yeah. you're not really a mom? No. Is that is that legal? Can you I, do that? I might be a mom. I might get a <laughs> knock on the door one of these days. Like from 20, 28-year-old? You never know. You never know. I, I, I had a couple of year-long blackouts. You did, all <laughs> kinds of things could have happened that I wasn't even aware of. There's so much to draw on as a parent. Did you just watch other parents, or where were you getting I that am from? nearly 13 years older than my little brother. So you were like a mom. When you I were was there. built in babysitter. That was my title. I changed. It's still all. not I, the same. I, I look don't at think. him and he is a big old man now. And I'm like, yeah. I changed your diapers and someday 
you might be changing your mind. <laughs> that's our big joke. I know it's disgusting. That's similar to the product we just talked about. In a minute. I know. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, mo- talk, we'll talk about that Did you model that? Oh. Did I model it? Yeah. I'm, I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> How's I it am. working for you? Hold on a second. <laughs> I didn't need to see that. What do you think of I that? Can the, what do you think you of would... the gotta go? Can you tell us your take on I it? I think it's actually really cool. Would you wear it if you were a guy? Yeah. You'd sit at the football game and just, I'd try just to, go? I'd try to make that work for me right now, right under this dress. <laughs> Hand it over. <laughs> All of a sudden, we went somewhere else. Uh-huh. Okay, let's, let's can we go back to direct response yes. so we don't get way off track? I know. Okay, so what can a marketer do, somebody that hires you, yeah. to make you the very best host on the set you can be? Ah, we should be very familiar with the product. Okay. You know? Yeah, we that, should, that does help. Yeah, and absolutely, we should uh, have it in time to finagle, finesse, Always my play with line. it. And they not should, the night before. They should also make sure their product is working, <laughs> that it's not some ridiculous prototype that we have to pantomime. Because I don't yeah. feel confident, and I don't think anybody does. And you know what? Those are a waste of money. Those are shows that don't work. Yeah. What do you think makes a good product? I think a good product is something that obviously comes from a need, mm-hmm. that there is a need and that people can relate to. I think it's a relatable product. I think it's also great when it's something that has a, a little bit of an angle that we haven't seen before. All right, so you sent me, I asked you to give me some facts about yourself. You took guitar lessons from a Brit named Andy. I mean, what, I what, did. Yeah, so what? He had purple velvet pants. Okay. And I remember I, he was so bored with me at one point that he was picking his nose. I caught him picking his nose. Nice. And I really remembered that about him. So I was like a little kid. Years later, mm-hmm. Must have been high school or something. I find out he is in a band called The Police. Wait, and the he's police? the guitarist. His no. name is Andy Summers. And because a friend of mine who used to take guitar lessons said, oh, What do you think of our old teacher? Because well, I thought if he can go from picking his nose <laughs> with a bored 10 year old to being in the freaking police. How does that happen? There is hope for me. Yes. And and it's worked. I hung in there. And here I am on the pitch. <laughs> you made it all the way to the top. I, ma- I slept my way to the middle. I was with all the wrong people. Episode four. I. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I had to die. Sorry. Let's not, let's not talk about that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go to the next one. Digging yourself in deeper. <laughs> okay. You are actually are very adept at modern dance. Yes, I am. And I was. something about standing up a long time. Who cares? I can, you can stand on one leg for a really long oh, time. Oh, one leg. You know, I got to dance. What has that done for you? I can put my pants on without hopping around the room. You have strong feelings about dunking food into liquid. Yeah. When people dunk donuts into coffee and yeah. little blobs of donut and it's all juicy and yeah, it's I good. think that's disgusting. Really? Yeah. Food doesn't look it You doesn't eat belong. cereal? Sometimes. Isn't cereal and milk? Are you not one of those that eats I it without the milk? I keep my milk and I put it in in increments no, so that you it don't. stays crunchy. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> you gave me this information. I, uh, you know what? All right, let's move on. You said something earlier about my dog Toby, my sweet little Yorkie Toby, 10 pounds. Your obsession, that, Toby. That I rock to sleep every single night. You I love him so, so much. You are so secure in your masculinity because <laughs> you turn into a blubbering idiot with that dog. I can't even tell you. When How he much ha- does he weigh? He weighs about 10 pounds, 8 he ounces. 10 pounds. It depends. It depends 10 if we, pounds, 8 ounces? What is he, a newborn? <laughs> if How gone, was your labor? Was it okay? <laughs> <laughs> if we go on vacation, he loses weight. Because was it a C-section? <laughs> I'm not telling those he details. He loses weight because he misses you? Yes. Okay, but you have a dog. I that, do. And you and she have weighs realized. 10 pounds. I don't know how many ounces. And I'm she, sorry. like, beat up my dog on a she play date. She did. If she came over now, she would never do that. She just, she'll sniff him and then ignore him because she's grown up. It's like every woman. Like like I do to you. I sniff you and <laughs> ignore you. God. Okay, well, here's the deal. Yeah. I am casting a new show. I could yeah. use a mom type, yeah. you know, about your, your look and yeah. age yeah. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. There's one skill, though, that yeah. the character has to have. What? They have to be able, you ready? She's going to say yes to anything because she's an actress, to play the ukulele. Now, is that something that you think you could pull off is play the ukulele? What? What do you What do you got? How, how did that happen? <laughs> how on earth was that ukulele sitting back there? Thank you, Andy Summers. <laughs> Can I play us out? Is this what you learned from Andy? Yes. He would actually be proud because I was terrible. You can play us out of our segment if Mm -hmm. you would like. Yes. Go ahead. Are you going to sing to him? I have words, yeah. Oh, go go for it. Special song. Tom hasn't heard this yet. No, I haven't. Bring your products, your great new products. They might be on TV. Bring your products, your awesome products. They might be pitched by me. (laughs) 
go. Tom Jordan brings you the pitch because marketing can be a bitch. He really has a plan. He's the guy who's in the know. He just might help your business grow. Tom Jordan is the man. You can fade over this part. If you're a marketer or you're an investor and you've missed any episodes of The Pitch or you want to watch any of the past episodes, you can go to my website, thepitchwithtom.com, or my YouTube channel, The Pitch with Tom Jordan. Tom, Tom, Tom Jordan. <laughs> Contact one of the inventors, or if you have any questions, email Tom at thepitchwithtom.com. Today's episode sponsored by Revenue Solutions.